Divine Truth Events These are events and presentations by Jesus and Mary. This presentation is part of the general question series, and it is a question and answer session from people in Kentucky. Presented by Jesus on the 7th of September 2013 in Kentucky, New South Wales, Australia. This is part one. So how's everyone today? <laughs> Mary's not with me today, so um, she's feeling some things that she needs to feel, so that's good. But uh, welcome today. By the way, I just wanted to compliment you on the group last week. It was really open and everyone seemed to want to participate and it was really good, actually. Uh, myself and Mary enjoyed ourselves a lot, actually. It's, when, it, when there's a group like that, it's a bit of a breeze to present. When there's a group that's all like rigid and hard and not wanting to hear anything, it gets a bit more difficult. Okay, well, I'm yours for three or four hours. What, what, do, you... <laughs> what do, would you like to know? <laughs> Can we start with Teresa here and then we'll go out the back to Eloisa? Thank you. Um, um, I have a bit of a conflict at the moment. It's around um, money stuff, bankruptcy, um, and the ethics of it. Yeah. Um, at the moment, we're going through a process of seeing if we should go bankrupt or not. Yeah. Um, but I don't feel comfortable with it because I feel like it's cheating in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, it's like avoiding my responsibilities around it. But then my conflict is, um, is that just me punishing myself? So when I think about it, I think, no, I should pay all these people back and stuff because some of them aren't, bankruptcy won't fix some of them anyway. Mm. Um, and it's, yeah, I'm just trying to work out what the ethics and the morals around what the loving things are yeah. to do around it. Well, firstly, Teresa, bankruptcy begins, and if we, if we now, if we expand the question a little, because I'd like to talk a little bit about money generally as well in the question. If you look, if you look at our Western society, we are very focused on money, aren't we? If you, for the majority of us, we either feel like, we usually feel we haven't got enough, <laughs> And those of us who do, who do have enough generally don't like sharing it very much either. So there, there are issues regarding money that we have that, or, that are really emotional in their nature. So whenever we're faced with not having enough money and going bankrupt, um, we're, we're basically not examining the fact that it's due to our previous actions that we have taken, not our actions right now. Does that make sense? So it's your actions that you've taken historically that have caused you to go bankrupt now. And this is something that we need to, or, or feel like you need to go bankrupt now. This is something we need to address. We need to understand that everything we create today has an effect tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. It has an effect on our future. And when we choose to take actions that are not responsible today, then it's going to have an effect on our future. Now, if we rewind, so if we look at your condition today and say, OK, we're worried that we're not going to have enough money to pay the bills, basically that's the problem, that was caused by your past decisions. And the question then becomes, well, what emotions drove those past decisions? Why have you made choices to spend more than you had or that you had the capacity to repay? Now, that is driven by emotions every single time. Whatever causes you to not have the capacity to repay something is driven by an emotion right at that moment. And that emotion is immoral in its nature because it's not taking responsibility. Therefore, it's unethical. You should only engage processes that you know you will be able to repay. 
But here in Western society, we are so driven by this desire to have things that we start to overextend ourselves. In other words, we, we want to have things, but we don't have the capacity to pay for the things that we have. And this is our primary issue when it comes to issues of bankruptcy. If you address the cause of that, then it's highly likely you'll get out of any um, financial hardship you're in and not have to declare bankruptcy at all. But if you do not address the cause of that, then what will happen is you'll definitely go bankrupt, but then you possibly go bankrupt again. And in fact, what they've found through studies is that the majority of people who go bankrupt once finish up going bankrupt two, three, four, five times in their lifetime. And the main reason why that happens is because there is this underlying emotional thing driving trying to have more and, and purchase more than you can pay for. So the real question becomes, why have you purchased more than you can pay for? Do you know what emotional reasons have driven that? What's driven that? Um, you, we've, we've talked about this in the past and it's to do with the fear in me about my, well, my parents' fear that it put on me. But I, I, don't, feel, I don't agree. Yeah, there's, there's, um, I'm af afraid of my husband's emotions around some of the stuff. So in other words, he purchases things that he doesn't have the funds to pay for? Yes, and but I mean, I do it too. Yes. Um, I feel like the world owes me. Yeah, that's more the emotion. Yeah. The um, feeling that the world owes you. Yeah. And, and your husband must have the same feeling. Okay. Otherwise, he wouldn't, he wouldn't purchase more than he could pay for either. Yeah. yeah. And if both of you have the same... See, normally in a family, one has the, that feeling yeah. and the other one has oftentimes the opposite feeling because that sometimes is what the law of attraction brings you. And so you end up at least surviving. Yeah. <laughs> but, but when both of you have the same feeling, yeah, it gets pretty difficult. It, it has exacerbated since we got together, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know I've had it all my life, but it got So worse. before you were married... Yep. To your husband, did you find did you find that you were always having a shortfall of funds? I was managing it. You were managing it, but yeah. when you say managing it, uh, was um, there always a flow? But you were always short. I was just having enough to get by on, and without getting the necessities, and occasionally I'd go into debt, but I'd be able to sort it out. Sort it out, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, see, I would suggest that. The problem was there before you met yeah, your husband, obviously, yeah, and yeah. you've now attracted another person who does the same thing as you, mm. and both of you don't check each other with it, and you both don't discuss it together as to what you're purchasing and so forth. And so in the end, what, what, we, what you end up with is spending more than you can pay for. Yeah, and it's chaotic yeah. and, yeah. Now, it's driven, as you've identified, from an emotion of rage, actually, from, of anger. Mm -hmm that the world should provide me with everything I want. Yep. And when you don't have the means to pay for it, you think the world should take the fall for that. Yeah. And that, that emotion is the emotion that needs to... That's where I'd begin, with that emotion. And I would work through that emotion into the fear of, that's underneath that emotion. So it starts with that anger. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the anger is a demand upon the world to look after you. In other words, a demand that you, don't, you shouldn't have to take personal responsibility for your choices and decisions. Okay. And in a way, bankruptcy is a way to not take personal responsibility yeah. for your choices and decisions. Yeah. Now, it is a big problem in the planet. If you, you look at very, very large companies, most very, very large companies do this eventually, where they get so large and very poorly managed sometimes... And you see them go broke and they've got, you know, 30, 40, 100,000 employees and they've all lost a job. And oftentimes it was due to the same feeling. And then they expect the government to bail them out. Mm. Most governments run like this. If you look at the US government at the moment, I think it's in something like 16 or $17 trillion worth of debt. Um, and and the, the Constitution stated at one point that it should only ever get into $5 trillion as a maximum. <laughs> and, it's, and it's like it's already three times that amount of debt. Yeah. And so yeah, the Australian government, of course, is running in debt rather than in surplus um, with their funds. And so basically it's a problem worldwide, isn't it, in, in terms of all of the Western world seems to want to do it. And we all 
have so that there's an indication of how much anger there is in most people that other people should take responsibility for the decisions you make. Mm. Even things like uh, public uh, so social programs like uh, ha unemployment, living, living on unemployment and things like that, often that is also a demand upon the environment to give you what you want. And so all of these are very angry emotions. Now, there's only two ways that these emotions got created. One way is that when you were young, you never got anything. And then you feel like you should get anything, you should get things when you grow up as an adult. And the other way is that when you were young, you were given everything you wanted without any responsibility. And, and then when you grow up, you start demanding that everybody else around you gives you everything you want without you taking any personal responsibility. Mm. And they're the two primary emotions that drive uh, a lack of responsibility with finances. Now, they're not the emotions that create a lack of finances. Right? Because there are other emotions again. So there are emotions associated with worth, in other words, what, whether, whether you feel you're worthy and things like that. But the, the feeling that you have inside of you is that you should be able to go and get anything you want at any time you want and you'll worry about paying for it later. Mm. Right? And the reality is a lot of people in the world have exactly, particularly in the Western world, have exactly the same uh, concept. It's not a loving concept, it's not a moral concept, it's not ethical. Yeah. But, but once we engage it for uh, over long periods of time, we eventually end up in so severe a debt that then we're thinking about bankruptcy. So what I would be doing is not focusing on the bankruptcy issue. I'd be focusing on what created the circumstances to get you into this place. Mm. Does that make sense? And if you're sincere about addressing the causes, then you'll want to address the emotions that caused you to make these decisions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't address those causal emotions, then you'll possibly go bankrupt. But at some point in the future, you'll probably, it'll yeah. probably happen again or you'll be in the same cycle unless you address this emotionally at some point. And that's the same with any emotion that you have that's out of harmony with love. Sooner or later, if you don't address it, it's going to come and rear its head again and again and again and again and again throughout your life. There's not much you're going to be able to do about that unless you choose to actually address the emotion that's created it. So I would start with the anger you feel, the expectation that other people look after you, that they give you what you want, and that you shouldn't have to take personal responsibility, and then ask yourself where those emotions came from. Did it come from a, a feeling of lack in your childhood, or did it come from being given everything you wanted and without any responsibility for, for those things? In, in other words, without any responsibility that, that you had to create such things for yourself. Mm. Okay. So which one did it come from yeah, for it was you? From, from the lack. From the lack? Yeah. I, I think, well, I think so. You have to be very careful, Teresa, in the way that you analyse this. Because if you look at the rest of your family, your extended family, they don't seem to have as much lack as you do. So Now, but in our childhood... I have a resistance to feeling that I might have had everything I asked for. I'm not saying you had everything you asked for in your childhood. Yeah. But what I'm saying is you've got to be very careful in your analysis mm. of this problem because, because, because you are projecting at the world so much rage about the world having to pay, to give, pay your way that you're not in a state where you can clearly think about your childhood issues at this point in time. This is where what I'm saying is you need to start with the rage yeah see that the rage is actually unloving, unethical and immoral yeah. and then work your way back from there rather than trying to guess what your childhood was like because at the moment I feel you're not accurately assessing your childhood and what it was like with regard to the money um, because it, it can be one of these two issues but the problem for you is you're going to try to blame it on someone else in your current state. In your current state, you're already blaming it on somebody else. You're blaming it on the world, right? And so you, you, you're going to look back at your childhood and have a temptation to now blame it on your parents. Mm -hmm. And that isn't going to be conducive to your healing the emotional problem of taking self-responsibility for your actions. Does that make sense? Yeah. And this is where you've got to be very careful. 
Yeah. Because you, you blame it on other, on other people, but you've got to, at some point, see that this is caused by your decisions, your, your choice yeah. to want more and more and more that you cannot afford. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And at some point in time, you've got to see that and, and take some responsibility for that. Because if you don't take responsibility for that, you'll be tempted to then go and blame your husband or blame... You know, the fact that you had children that are like that or blame the fact that you're brought up with nothing and, or blame the world itself mm. or blame something. But, but all that anger is, is covering over a lot of fear and grief that you need to obviously feel to heal the issue. But, but if, you, if you keep blaming everybody else, you're not going to be taking any personal responsibility. And you, there's a desperate need for you to take personal responsibility. In fact, if you took personal responsibility for every single debt, you would find that you would have a lot of assistance to actually uh, overcome the debt, yeah. right? But the reality is if you don't take personal responsibility for all of the debt that you've created, then, then a lot of people will, will push yeah. pretty hard to... Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. yeah. And, and in fact, it's unethical for you to even make the statement, even if I pay back what I can pay back, the uh, people are not going to be satisfied. That statement itself is unethical. At the beginning of the question, you made some unethical statements, not understanding that your attitude towards other people mm. is such that if they have money, then they should give you some. Or they should allow you to get away with the debt. And that's not an ethical position. It's not a moral position either. I see a lot of people who don't have a lot of funds have that attitude. I've met many rich people who have a very good attitude to ethics when it comes to money. They always pay their debts. And I've met many poor people who think they should always get away with paying their debts. Mm. And that's an unethical attitude. And it's one reason why they don't have enough money. Because the, the money they do have, they're using unethically and immorally. In other words, they're expecting other people to pay for things that they should be personally responsible for. And when you're unethical and immoral, God's laws are always going to try to correct that. And so God's laws are going to, going through the law of attraction, you're going to create a poor, a poor situation and that comes up as, and challenges your compromise of your morals. Does that make sense? Yep. So taking action to confront all of these debts that I've got. Um, will bring up some of the emotion. Yeah. Because some of the emotion you'll start feeling is, why should I have to do that? They've yeah. got plenty of money and yeah. I've got none. And yeah. Why should I have to pay that, you know? Uh, that person's got plenty of month funds and I haven't got as much, you know? Mm. They've got more than I have, so why should I have to pay that back and yeah. all that kind of thing? So, so I've been doing that. Yeah. But um, perhaps I haven't been doing that as much. Well, I would, I would I actually, if it was me, I would write down every single debt I had. Yeah. I would write down how much every single debt is. I would t total all up and, and, and then sit with the shock of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then what I would do is I'd approach every single person with some kind of a payment plan. I would get rid of every single credit card. I would get, you know, so yeah. that I can't go and do the same thing again. Yeah. Um, I, there was a lot of personal choices I would choose to, to make if I was in the situation. You're not choosing those things. Because there is an, a feeling in you yeah. emotionally and a feeling in your husband emotionally that, that you should be able to get away with some of it. Mm. And while you have that feeling, God's laws are going to be trying to correct that feeling because it's not ethical. Yeah. 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 So it's very important for anybody who has any debt to, to have a good look at their situation, their personal situation. If you, if you can't afford to pay it back... Um, then you should stop incurring more. <laughs> and you should look at the underlying emotional reasons why in the past you have made choices which caused you to think that you should be able to go out and buy new things all the time and incur more debt without there being any sense of responsibility. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Thanks. So to me, the issue, the, the, the real question that you asked, which is not the answer that you probably expected <laughs> that I gave, is about, is about going bankrupt. What's ethical in terms of going bankrupt? Can you see if you, had, if you address the issues the way I'm suggesting, you would never get that question to have to be asked. Yeah. 
unless there was some unusual circumstances such as your house burning down or, you know, some unusual circumstances that might have occurred that might cause that particular problem. But, but it wouldn't be caused by just a, a choice of consumption. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm suggesting to you that if you're getting to the place where this is a question, then it means that there's a lot of unethical and immoral behaviour that, it's, that it has, has been taken before this point that have, has not been corrected and there, is, and there is a resistance to correcting it mm. inside of you. And that's why this point eventually becomes so severe that you're considering bankruptcy. Yeah. And at that point, my suggestion is choose differently, choose to get into some of these emotions, choose to try to resolve the issue without bankruptcy. And, but if bankruptcy is forced upon you by someone, then of course you will yeah. need to go through it. But... but you want to try to avoid that by taking responsibility for everything that you have purchased in the past and what you've done. Mm. And, and usually, if a person chooses along those lines, they get assistance to do so. Yeah, we've noticed that already. Yeah. Yeah. And if they don't choose to go along those lines, yeah. they'll get a lot of uh, quite angry people wanting them to, take, <laughs> to clean, clean them out, as the saying goes. Uh, and that is, again, the law of attraction at work. Mm. When we refuse to take personal responsibility for our own actions and decisions from the past, then we surely should, be at, should expect other people to demand of us that we take some responsibility for what we've done in mm. the past. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And in fact, for other people to allow us to do it would not be them loving us at all. Mm. So if other people allowed us to get away with incurring a heap of debt... Uh, without taking any action uh, to, to resolve the problem, then they wouldn't be a loving us even. Yeah, I've, I've got that situation as well, mm. which I'm, I, I do blame that other person as well for that, I know, but, yeah. which doesn't help. No. Yeah. So you, you have people around you who would, can help you out of the debt, but the reality is why should they help you out of the debt when it's been a problem all the way through your life? Mm. You're not taking responsibility. Your husband's not taking responsibility for his purchases either. Can you see that it wouldn't be a very loving thing for them to give you more funds only for you to go out and spend them and still have a problem of not paying all of your debt? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the end, unless you cure the emotional reason why it happens, this is going to be an ongoing problem for a lot of your life. Mm. Yeah. What I find too, uh, just a general comment to everyone, what I find too is that people who are in a large amount of debt or have a large amount of uh, expenses generally have no desire whatsoever to either curtail them or to actually know their true financial position. Mm. Now, if you truly love yourself, you will at every moment know your true financial position. At every moment. You won't have to wait to the end of the year till the accountant tells you what your true financial position is. You will know every month, every week, what your true financial position is, what you can afford to pay and what you can't afford to do. You will know it. And as you work through the emotions surrounding money, your financial position should improve. But part of working through these emotions about money are all going to be associated with taking personal responsibility for your life. And that's where a lot of people fall short. Mm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any more questions about that issue? Or no? Okay.